Hello, my name is Nathan Clements Gillespie. I'm the Artistic Director of Freeze Masters, and it is a pleasure and an, indeed an honor to welcome you to this Freeze Talk with artist Takashi Murakami and curator Tobias Berger. Takashi, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. You look absolutely fantastic. It is, it really, it is, it is amazing. I was already excited for this talk, and now I just, I can't wait to hear you speak. So really, it's, it, it's really just up to me to say thank you to you and, and, and Tobias. Uh, Tobias Berger is, of course, head of art at Taipun Center of Heritage and Arts in Hong Kong. And so over, over to you, Takashi and Tobias. And again, thank you so much for being with us for the 2020 Freeze Talks. Thank you, Nathan. Um, thank you, Takashi. It's great to be here on Zoom. Um, certainly, it would be nice uh, to be in London, but here we are in these times. Um, thank you, Takashi. Um, also, thank you for yeah, wearing, the, wearing the, um, the costume you had for Daigon Contemporary. I'm very honored and to see you in your fantastic studio. Um, I would like to start first um, with a few questions about um, production and your work, and then um, move over to collecting and collecting art, which are two things you're very good in. Um, let's first start really at the beginning. Um, you actually majored at an art school um, in traditional style of Japanese painting. You do have a PhD in, from the Tokyo International um, University of the Arts. And um, you recently opened a show um, with works inspired by the late Luxembourg German artist Michel Mayeros in his studio in Berlin. Um, but when you showed here in, in Hong Kong, you also showed a lot of works inspired by Francis Bacon, and you made huge series inspired by historical and um, classical Japanese paintings. And maybe let's first talk about how meaningful or important these um, painters or these historical works are for your work. When I start uh, my artist career, before 10 years, when I start to the, go to the art school, so my one of the teacher is uh, the Germany uh, printing artist, uh, Horst Janssen. So he did a lot of things, uh, copy from the Japanese ukiyo-e stuff. So that is, uh, I, when I, uh, starting for the, my career before, long time ago, I already understanding for the, can possible to making for the, imitate from the historical art piece. And then the Horst Janssen, uh, the concept is uh, transformation from the original. That's why, uh, for example, my uh, homage for Francis Bacon painting, uh, I said uh, homage for the Francis Bacon, like uh, using for the Francis Bacon name. And exactly, I lent it from the, his painting style of thing, but uh, completely, you know, uh, change in my head, in my brain. So that idea came from the, the Germany printing, you know, printer, for sense. That's why. And um, what do you think is important or what's the emphasis of painting today? How important is painting today? Uh, when I was find out the, my painting style of thing, so that moment was very difficult to make it for the paintings because after American uh, art movement, simulationism was, uh, you know, cannot make it for the anything. Sherry Levin, Jeff Koons, like a Richard Prince, it's just a print. Like, you know, uh, cannot do anything is a, uh, you know, big attitude. So, but uh, when I was, you know, very young time, so like a Julian Schnabel, Anselm Kiefer was uh, my hero. So I really want to make him for the kind of the action painting. And I did very fast moment, but like, when I presentation for the, uh, the critic people, no reaction or, oh, this is just you know, imitated from the new painting of style. That's why I have to looking for the, you know, some other style. But, uh, you know, I came from the Japanese traditional painting, you know, department. That means I have to find out the painting style. That's why, you know, when I find out 
to the Japanese anime and manga style of thing, like imitated from the American pop art, looks like a Liechtenstein and the uh, Andrew Hall stuff. So that is, uh, I, I, I thought, oh, I found uh, this is my painting style. But, you know, uh, many times I tested to the market and the critic people. And then finally, uh, very fast moment. So my painting was good reaction is a background is silver. And, uh, you know, uh, the image is uh, naked women or flower thing. So that's why I choosing for the theme or motif. So, you know, naked women, mm -hmm. naked, you know, men and flower thing. So this is a, you know, kind of back and forth, the communication with the market and, uh, you know, communicate with the curating people. And um, if you, I mean, we see that um, right where you sit, right? You're sitting in your studio, we see a work, that is in the works and we see in the background and we see all the silk screen. And being, being in your studio, um, also one understands how much work actually goes into each of your works. I mean, you first do a small hand drawing, then it gets scanned, it gets edited, it gets rescanned, it gets perfected. And there are hundreds and hundreds of drawings and prints and rescans before it even gets into the first phase. And then, it gets, um, it gets silk screened and we actually see in the background of you sitting there um, a few of these silk screens, but some of your paintings I know need dozens or even hundreds of silk screens. And after they are silk screened, um, they are re they're actually painted by kind of a, a group of very skilled painters in your, in your studio under the supervision of you. It's really not only an intellectual labor, but also an, a craft labor. So tell me, um, how important is that process? Yeah, like, uh, you know, Tobias uh, talking about uh, how very complicated my painting process and how many silk screen is great, but uh, everything is, for me, is negative. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, uh, when, <laughs> if I can do just, you know, brush and uh, tube, so, you know, if I can do myself to painting everything, this is, uh, this is exactly paint, painter's talent. But I have no talent. That's why I use it for a lot of my assistant. And I use it for the Macintosh. I use it for the Adobe you know, uh, kind of software. So I need uh, help, a lot of things. So this is a very shame reality. So that, but you know, like you, so completely far away from the you know normal artist. That's why my my style of thing is a very looks like unique, but you know, same time to I'm very sad myself. I cannot do uh, myself, you know, because when I choosing for the uh, artist, so this is uh, my job. So the wiser reason is I cannot. Uh, communicate with uh, other people, but now, so I employ for the over you know hundred people, so it, this is a super sad reality. Yeah, but it's also a, an an amazing job in editing. Um, I mean, every I see. I mean, if anybody's ever sees these these drawings, you see how much it is, how detailed that editing is. But um, so how much has that changed over the years? Because when you started, there were I mean, you just, when you started, um, Photoshop just came out. Um, mm. So how, how did that process for you actually change in the last um, 10, 20 years? Oh, uh, I don't know, but uh, for example, so right now, this year, uh, I found very nice timing to the big change because everybody understanding for the, this is the time, right? So before I changed a lot was a uh, big earthquake, uh, 2011. Is that the make sense that your question and yes. answer? Yes, yes, that, yes, yeah. 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 <laughs> so that, that is, uh, you know, uh, the social some big happening time. So I can do a uh, big, big change. And, uh, you know, same time to the you know, minor change to the style. It, this is, uh, you know, kind of the weekly and daily stuff. 
So a, a little by little change to change and the software is the evolution. So, and also the, you know, these 10 years, I really deeply commitment with a 3D uh, animation, you know, or data yeah. stuff. That is, uh, in my head, is uh, very, you know, shuffling and uh, can pick up a, a lot of idea uh, from the, this technique. So, something like that. So, um, I mean, to tell maybe the audience, you also are running an animation studio and you're very, you're very involved in making kind of commercial animation for television. Though, though that was very important for your, for your development as an artist, you're saying. Yeah, because uh, honestly, uh, my very, very first time shocking was when I was uh, six, six years old, five years old. When yeah. I watching to the TV, like a monster TV program, like a Ultraman, like a kind of the, some city, you know, monster kaiju stuff was uh, my first shocking memory. Plus, yeah. uh, why the Vietnam War was a uh, big shocking because my dad was, uh, you know, uh, he was working at the self-defense uh, self, self uh, army. So that mean, and also that he is a, he, a super geek for the kind of the, you know army kind of military you know uh, kind of thing. That's why uh, you know my dad when I watching to the Vietnam War documentary stuff. So he explained me in detail. Oh, this machine gun is M16. So this is the newest thing. This is a very light and floating at the water. Blah blah blah. And then, you know, this is a completely kind of wash up my brain. So that's why I have, when I uh, have to, uh, when I'm making for the, my honest thing is I have to back to the, my brain past memory. That's why mm -hmm. it's uh, you know, animation or uh, city monster movie is, uh, and also the uh, Vietnam War and the World War II wow. documentary stuff was a uh, very, very important thing. And but if you if one goes to the art fair, and this is a talk for an art fair, and one goes to the galleries that represent you, um, Gagosian and Paratin, but sometimes yeah. one sees work at other galleries, um, one sees more actually the rather happy, pleasant works. There are more flowers than there are skulls. There are more DOBs um, than say seven to seven or bacons. And mm -hmm. do you think that is maybe um, one reason why people often read you and I would actually say misread you as an overly happy um, happy artist instead of actually seeing all these motifs of vanity of religion of faith in your work yeah like uh, for example okay I've been thinking about uh, why artists have to you know, thinking about uh, suicide mm -hmm. and uh, also the some drug horics, alcoholics. Mm -hmm. So that mean maybe big slump is uh, mostly the big painful thing. So, but uh, I knew, so I have no talent, you know, like uh, compared with a master, maestro artist, my talent is very small, but at the same time, too, I want to make it for the newest thing anytime. But at the same time, if I want to make it for the anytime to the newest or a very challenging thing, is uh, immediately getting for the slump. I cannot move in anywhere. That's why I have to move in. Like, uh, every day I have to make an exercise. That means very good exercise, making for the happy images or uh, can sell easy images. That's why, you know, every day, like uh, my routine walk is, uh, you know, kind of the happy something. But, you know, very, uh, like a uh, few time, but not very nice example is uh, uh, 500 Alahat painting. That was, you know, suddenly to come to in my head to and then making i have to make it for the completely different images but where from the, this image is no reason 
just you know i had a big uh shocking from the uh, tv you know a tsunami happening i watching so that moment was uh, you know in my brain have uh, some tornado and then find out the very new thing and then you know 500 arahat thing was big success uh in uh, you know and also that i made to the variation uh, arahat painting like uh, maybe like a 20 pieces but you know uh, you know uh i couldn't find out the newest thing you know anytime that's why you know i have to come back to mr dog and the flower thing and uh, you know happy something costume play something like that it's like it feels like the the fish you look you you um selected for and the background it's a little bit like that right it's kind of swimming yeah. there <laughs> <laughs> that, that is uh you know i laid uh, you a question and yeah. uh Exactly, this question is uh, I, you know, kind of the, you know, hook up. Okay, so I yeah. have to presentation for that. Not happy something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a beautiful work. <laughs> Thank you. Um, let's talk about collecting, um, because you you do have a large contemporary art collection, which has been shown quite bigly in Yokohama, but also in part um, in Oslo and with us in Daegu Contemporary. Um, and I think um, one recognizes actually a lot of influences from that collection um, to your work, right? There's a Schnabel, there's an Araki, there's Warhol, so names you were talking about before. Can you talk a little bit about um, how that influence, um, how is that influence of that collection and of these artists to your, to your art and to your career? Yeah, so when, uh, I, when I was find out well, I have to make a collection. The moment was my piece uh, was in an auction. My lonesome cowboy was uh, 60 million dollars. So wow. that, that mean is, you know, I have no idea. What is that? <laughs> and then same, same auction, I bought uh, Yoshitomo Nara sculpture is over 1 million thing. Because, you know, compare with my piece is 60 million. That, uh, in my head, one million is, you know, honestly, I thought super cheap. Oh, that's one million dollar, <laughs> right? And then I, I, I make a paddle and I got, uh, you know, another piece over, you know, 1.2 million dollar or something like that. But, you know, after that, I found myself, I have no money. So, and then <laughs> I have to lend the money stuff. So it looks like that reality is very, you know, can learn the money and the value and what is art mean. So I found that this is a very nice training. And then after that, I bought from the, my gallery, Perotan Gallery, Gagushan Gallery, Brahmapo Gallery, and uh, David Tsubaina Gallery, you know, 303 Gallery, many galleries, Andre Rosen Gallery, a lot. So, uh, and then step by step, I understanding for the, what is uh, communicate with a gallerist and uh, mm -hmm. what is uh, communicate with the artist and uh, kind of the, the kind of, how can I say, uh, uh, like uh, art world eco cycle, everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and then, okay, so that's why, so I have to make it for the, this kind of art, and then this uh, piece is not good sales, big big price, but same time to flower design thing can possible to a little bit raise the price. Mm -hmm. So, or like uh, my marketing, plus like uh, I found uh, the market reality because, uh, for example, like uh, my uh, Japanese artist background doesn't have a real Western art market and art world. No. That's why I have to run everything myself. And then yeah. finally, I spend the money like, a, uh, like a recently I calculate the, how much spend the money is a $78 million. I bought oh. <laughs> the collection. So this, and then my tax, you know, uh, office oh, people is uh, 
are you crazy? It's a, you know, <laughs> you, you have to bankrupt. Yes, uh, I almost, almost bankrupt. <laughs> but, yes. you know, I learned a lot in, uh, it's, uh, from the, this uh, experience. So that means like, uh, you know, which piece is, uh, you know, very sad when, you know, when I spend the money, $700,000 and after the auction two years later, is, uh, this is uh, no value. Oh my God, I lose money, everything. It looks like a stop op stock option. So I, I have a lot of experience. So that is uh, I, now, so I'm doing for the galleries. So I can edit, I have to editing for the young artist price. I can, I can calculation from the, my reality, plus like uh, watching to the art, uh, art market. So yeah. that's why, you know, uh, and also the, uh, where from my idea, so I found uh, when I uh, choosing for the, my collection stuff, so I found a very precisely uh, example, like a, uh, like a Schnabel, you said a Schnabel, Kiefer. So that was my, my hero. And uh, when I asked him for the Gagosian gallery, oh, I, I want to this, this, this. And uh, how much is that? He said, oh, Takashi, you are so lucky. So now is, uh, the Kiefer is not too expensive. These three pieces you know, everything total, $1.5 million. Very cheap. <laughs> oh, I cannot do that. You know, I can, <laughs> you know, pay for that. You know, so my, you know, uh, calculation is maybe the maximum is $600,000. $600, and then, okay, so you, have, you can buy for that one piece or one piece and a small piece. Blah, blah, blah. So and then, you know, I bought a uh, key for stuff. So, in my mind is very, you know, deeply satisfaction. And also, the, you know, I sleeping with uh, artists, looks like that. It looks like, you know, can ha you know, hugging, and, uh, you know, he is inside in my head. Very intimate. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, <laughs> and then finally, why, uh, like, uh, art collection is, uh, addiction is it looks like alcoholics right yeah. so each time to drinking uh, have to drinking uh, alcohol looks like that artist and then artists coming to the everywhere and uh, my feeling is ah oh, thank you Kiefer <laughs> to my mind <laughs> looks like that <laughs> so that looks like that right is that that makes sense, Lanza? It makes complete sense for every art collector that is listening I think it makes complete sense <laughs> Um, but the funny, not, the interesting thing is that you're not only collecting art, which is very important for you, but um, you also have a huge collection of Japanese um, ceramics. You have um, historic um, Japanese ink paintings, very beautiful ones. You have mid-century furniture, mostly Japanese. Um, and there are different other plant collection and even a bug collection. Um, so there are quite a lot of collections for you. Um, what actually attracts you to the other collections, not only the art collection? What is that fascination? Yeah, uh, because, you know, uh, for example, you know uh, myself very much. When, yes. you know, people came to the, my studio, so everybody very surprising for the I sleeping in a box. Yes. So I, I have uh, no sense for the, you know, decoration for the, my room. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, I have to understand for the, you know, rich people or like uh, decoration people, that means I, I have to understand for the furniture culture. And also the, you know, uh, many uh, collectors asking me the Japanese traditional art history thing. That is also the, you know, I have to learn uh, very seriously. That is uh, the kind of the buying pieces is uh, mostly very can, uh, can making for the easy to the serious, you know, study. So that's why, you know, I, you know, uh, buying for the furniture and the traditional ink painting. And, but uh, ceramic is a completely different. This is, a, I don't know why. So this is a, exactly my hobby. Like uh, mm. when I watching to the ceramic is, uh, you know, uh, the, it's kind of a fall in love. So like uh, kind of the, my heart is uh, shaking and uh, oh my God, this is beautiful, beautiful. But uh, I don't know why, why the reason. I mean, you have, I, 
I think, is it 5,000 pieces of your ceramic collection? I mean, I have seen it twice and um, exhibited in huge installations in Japan, but it is, it is a collection of everything, right? From everyday, yeah. everyday work to really wonderful artworks. And it's something that becomes more and more prominent also in the international visual arts market. So what's that fascination about ceramic? Is it just love or um, the haptic thing? Or, you know, where is that? Uh, the my collection? Is a, no, yeah, uh, the fascination of ceramics. Why are you so fascinated? So fascinated? Um, why do you uh, love ceramics so much? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, but uh, I hope uh, in the West, so I hope one day to the more serious show to yeah. do. And also that I want to share with uh, a contemporary art collector to the, my, you know, kind of the beauty selection. So mm -hmm. maybe the Japanese ceramic and the Chinese ceramic and the Korean ceramic, like Asian territory ceramic is completely different. Uh, for example, Chinese people is uh, thinking about the ceramic is uh, we are the number one. That's why, you know, uh, like uh, cannot sell for the Japanese ceramic, you know, often. But now it's uh, little by little to sell because this is uh, our ceramic is very cheap. But same time to the, in the Western world, uh, have a, a lot of possibility because a very few time to touch with a Japanese ceramic. That's why I want to explain and I want to education to the, where from the, some, this beauty sense of, you know, sense of thing. So mostly, you know, any, any, anybody to know, link with the tea ceremony culture, but uh, where from the tea ceremony culture, from the, you know, war, big, you know, big war thing. So samurai war, so samurai warrior, to when making for the very deeply communicate uh, without, a, without a battle, that is, uh, you know, we have to set up for a very small room in the tea ceremony. So like a war and beauty and tea ceremony, so that history is, uh, you know, pretty amazing, you know, thing. That's why, you know, I want to, like, uh, making for the education for the, and over, uh, like, uh, kind of the explain for the, this story. It is one of the most inspiring collections I've ever seen, and I hope oh, it will travel one day to, to Europe. It's, it's really wonderful. But, you know, uh, I, I don't know, like, uh, this is okay, but that, uh, your father's, you know, collection is crazy. And then, you know, your father's correction, when you saw that this reality, that's why you're understanding my garbage correction. <laughs> it, it, I, I, I think your, your collection is very, very sophisticated, but I think- No, I don't think is, so, I don't think so. Uh, no, I'm, I mean, I, I think I, that- I'm very inspired for the, you know, your dad correction. This is, uh, you know, making you. a very strange story. <laughs> I yeah. love that. One day we might bring them together. Um, let's talk <laughs> about. Let, let's talk about. Um, I mean, again, this is a feast talk, and you do actually also, besides being an amazing artist and collector, um, you are running a very successful gallery, Kai Kai Kiki Gallery. And for me, this gallery is fascinating because it's not one of the big players in the market, but it actually has premiered a lot of big artists that are now. Um, very, very known in the market. Um, I mean, you still represent people like Mr. and Masaki and Virgil Abloh and Tankano, but also you premiered a lot of, a lot of other young artists and you gave them the first chance um, basically to shine. Um, but tell me, what is the beauty actually for an artist to run its own gallery? Oh, uh, this is, uh, honestly, it's, uh, I want to eating the, you know, young blood. Right, mm. <laughs> <laughs> like a vampire. <laughs> it's uh, you know drinking for the you know very fresh uh, like a blood there. <laughs> In time to the you know I found myself. So when I was thirty, you know, uh, like a thirty mid thirty years old. So I was you know my my main theme is fall in love with the women. Mm. But, you know, <laughs> kind of the, I getting old and uh, I got a uh, family. So this feeling is not, you know, not gone, like a uh, change for something. 
So that is a, a communication with the artist. It's kind of mm -hmm. when, you know, almost every day, every night, I'm making for the, you know, social media with the artist. Hey, Masaki, so what's going on? <laughs> and he, you know, sent it to me that, oh, Takashi, like uh, I'm doing for the, something like that stupid thing. Ah, ha, ha. Like, oh, I saw that your Instagram. Ah, ha, ha. And then, you know, same time to the, oh, hey, Tenga, like uh, you are making for the Gundam images. And uh, Tenga said, you know, oh, sorry, Takashi. Now I'm making for the different some sculptures. Oh, okay, so please send me. This, you know, communication is completely, you know, same way because why I found like a foreign love is a, I want to understanding for the yourself or as a people. This is a very primit primitive, you know, desire. So, mm -hmm. and the artist communication is uh, almost same, like, uh, you know, the face and voice, what? But, you know, the art piece is so much far away. So that is a truth, that this, you know, art piece is a truth thing. So I touch with uh, uh, the pe people, the truth is uh, very, you know, touch my feeling. Like, uh, ooh, so thank you so much. And then finally, so uh, uh, recently, when is uh, my happiness? time is a uh, communication with uh, artists. The mm. mostly I found a young artist and then this artist, artist uh, show is in uh, my gallery and a uh, big success and uh, many people involvement. That moment is ooh, like uh, super happy. So mm. that's why you know, I cannot you know, escape from the, this experience. Nice. But there's, there's another side which is also quite interesting because for me, you, you actually have three kinds of collectors. On the one mm. side, certainly they are the collectors of your, of your painting and sculptures, the kind of visual art collectors. But then there's also a group of collectors that uh, collect your prints and you do quite a lot of very nice prints. And then mm. there's a collector, um, collector circle that is really collecting your merchandise. And we had that when we opened your show, we had people waiting for four hours in front of the shop just to mm. buy your merchandise. Mm. And for me, it was interesting how much, how much I see detail and work you put into this merchandise and how important I see that group of collectors is for you. You do actually um, auto, um, signature sessions. You, you really care about the quality of them and so on. So are, all, are these three kinds of collectors all, all important for you? Or is there a hierarchy? Or um, how do you deal with these kind of three kinds of collectors? Yeah, it's because, you know, super rich people is a few people. Mm -hmm. Right, and rich people is a little bit, you know, big, you know, area, <laughs> and the medium class is bigger, right? And uh, like me, like uh, you know, just a confusing artist or confusing people is a more, you know, a very big, big thing. So I, when I started for the making a print printing. So that moment was I have no market uh, without Japan. So I have to survive in, in just in Japan. So I have to find out that my new market. That is a uh, general people. That's why I created for the posters and then plus signature. Very first moment, uh, this 300 edition poster was uh, 50 data, like, uh, you know, very cheap, but, you know, not good reaction. And then one day, like I, I was uh, making for uh, maybe 50 different images by 300. It's kind of a tons of pieces. And then one day, Perotan, Emmanuel Perotan came to my studio and he found uh, these posters. Hey, Takashi, this is a treasure. So I want to bring back to the France. And then mm. he, you know, he bought almost like 50% uh, of my inventory. And then he's, you know, making for the law. And then he so sells at, uh, looks like uh, $100 or $120 mm. and at a FIAC, like a fast or like a very early FIAC. And then he phone called me, hey, Takashi, sold out. I need more. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, I was shocking. Like, uh, but yeah. honestly, who created the market is Perotan himself. But, uh, mm. you know, I created and, uh, you know, uh, for the Japanese audience and uh, this, this was a, 
uh, mistake. But you know, finally, now is a uh, you know Japanese audience, Japanese customer, and Asian customer, you know, can touch with uh, my uh, poster or printing you know edition stuff. But this is a uh, can where from that this reality is my reality, my Japanese reality. And um, you you were talking already about it when you talked about discussing with artists and so on. But the way we communicated art and in the art world changed dramatically. I mean, here we are in a Zoom talk, you're in Tokyo, I'm in Hong Kong, talking with people in, in London and all over the world. Um, how do you think this kind of change of communication has actually changed the art world and has changed your art? Okay. Uh, I found like uh, four or five years ago, uh, complex one was mm. a big time point. So like uh, I didn't know that what is a complex song and I didn't know anything for the street fashion, but I already involvement we uh, go through the Kanye West, and then you know when I uh, I was uh, ambassador for the complex song uh, with uh, Pharrell Williams, and then I came to the Los Angeles Long Beach, but uh, at, before the night, already long line like a you know, 200, 300 people waiting. And then these geek, it looks like a geek people, find out me. And then these people said, Oh my God, oh my God, <laughs> you are Takashi Murakami, Maestro. But uh, why so you find out me and you, why so you recognize me? I don't know, I don't understand. But uh, you know, this is came from the street culture. And then uh, the complex gone, uh, that this event uh, has uh, some booths and they bought from me is uh, many merchandising. So, op you know, just open, that store was long line. And then, oh my God, the market is completely born here. Uh, why? So, it, you know, we, we can find out that this new market, I don't know, but uh, maybe came from the Kanye, came from Louis Vuitton. It's a kind of the, came from the bands. I have a, a lot of collaboration with a fashion brand. Where from the, you know, my next movement is, uh, looks like that my history. And then uh, exactly the same time to the, you know, calls himself. So he making for the art pieces. He's very, you know, pushing for the art wall, like a museum industry. And then step by step to he came into the, you know, fine art world. So I, um, you know, many times to making for the uh, museum show, but uh, my ways go out to the fine art market. But the cause, you know, came from the, you know, outside, the, come into the fine art world. So, and then, you know, our young artists, you know, looks, looks like this movement. Oh my God, this is uh, not, you know, necessary to set up for a gallery or like, uh, you know, can sales for the, you know, gadget. The t-shirts and the small, some gadget can sales myself or art itself, but like an art piece is have to go through the gallery, you know, have to find out the serious curator. And then they understanding for that, you know, came how become to the artist came from the bottom. So, and then, you know, you know, the Asia territory have a completely different world right now. So, and then like, uh, you know, our territory, our group of artists and the cause, yes. And, uh, you know, Daniel Asham, like, uh, you know, Perotan group of artists. It's kind of the, looks like a very childish and uh, like a, looks like a toy art is a big movement right now in uh, mostly the mainland China in a, you know, very original market came up. And then same time to the Louis Vuitton to invite for the Barger Abro and then Barger making for the object. And then, mm. you know, I, you know, presentation for the Barger's art piece this is, uh, you know, I'm making for a riot to the, you know, art market. <laughs> you know, chaotic situation in Asia. But uh, this scale of thing is a huge 
that's why you know cannot closing eye so that that is a reality so and then uh, maybe in uh, this corona you know uh, covid 19s effect is a very good timing for the much more expanding for the, this toy art stuff because you know young many people is uh, depressing and also the you know for example nike or adidas cannot produce very speedy that's why this niche market you know daniel ashan our print you know calls toys these you know kind of a toy art stuff is uh, you know getting for the this market and then maybe next two years you know much bigger i thought you think i mean you're you're rather humble there you're you were really on the forefront of that of that movement right i mean you're you were i mean remember in in mocha and in frankfurt where you had a louis vuitton store in in your exhibition and you really pushed you pushed a lot of boundaries um bringing street art or street culture um into visual culture and so on i mean you, there was really a lot of work done by you which, which is maybe not so recognized um at the moment but i'm sure people will catch up on that um to to finish that one i mean we are you are not going to freeze this year i'm not going to freeze this year but if you would go there what what would you look actually what would somebody like you look for today in a in a big art fair you know i am very lovely for the walking art fair because you know i have a booth also <laughs> and uh, as a artist is a uh, yoshitomo nara because mm-hmm. he's hoping and uh, he's uh, you know kind of the he's he very he's very, how can i say purest way is a uh, kind of the marketing i don't know not can say marketing like uh, he he want to input anything what is a uh, movement mm-hmm. right now so but uh, you know most of the artists don't want to go to the art fair so because this is too much you know marketing so but i love the art fair because this is a a lot of desire right so i want to buy or you know i hate this gallerist and uh, you know i want to drink you know better champagne or something like that it's a you know kind of a chaotic you know desire place I really love it for uh, you know touch with uh, this environment anytime that's why you know uh oh uh, each time to uh, I came to the art fair like uh, you know I like thank you so much freeze at uh, uh, they invited for the New York freeze so mm-hmm. one day I want to go to the London freeze yeah so yeah I think that brings us to the end um thank you so much um Takashi for that super interesting talk and very very honor to do that with you um anything you would like to add for um for the art fair audience or for people who buy art in general <laughs> uh, maybe maybe next uh, ne- next fall is uh covid 19 is you know finished right maybe i don't know we hope so here in hong kong <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> but, but you know the honestly the asian people you know much more doesn't care right i don't know why <laughs> yes yeah so, hong kong is doing uh, very well yeah yeah so hopefully like uh, asian art fair is uh, more soon to come back and then i want to test for the uh, you know uh, my idea I go okay. to the reality okay go back So thank you a lot. Thank you to Tokyo. Thank you, so thank you yeah. to Freeze. Um thank you for everybody organizing that. Um it was great fun and bye-bye.